Hello and welcome to the ChessCreator.com YouTube video channel. In today's video I'd like to continue with my series of lectures on the London system. This is the third video in the series so far. Just to remind you, in the first lesson we looked at the basic concepts and the basic patterns involved in the London system. And in lecture two we looked at arguably the best chess player of all time, Garry Kasparov, giving a masterful display of using the London system in a 2004 simultaneous exhibition. So, after looking at Garry Kasparov's game, there's only one way to go, which is down, and uh, to give as much contrast as possible, we're pretty much going down to the bottom of the chess food chain and uh, taking a brief run through one of my own games. This was a five minute game I played recently and I think it illustrates uh, some of the points that I've been making on the London system. It was relatively thematic in terms of um, some of the patterns and uh, some of the piece movements during the game. And the thing I'd like you to focus on here, or two things rather, is uh, really taking a look at black in terms of their counterplay. One of the strengths of the London system is that it tends to be an opening which can stifle black's counterplay and we see black in this game getting ever more tied up in terms of their piece configuration and their counter-attacking options. The other thing I'd like to focus on is that the London system um, can be very effective in terms of it gives very flexible castling options. There are lines uh, where you castle kingside, lines where you castle queenside, and indeed uh, lines where you delay castling or um, perhaps not even castle at all and instead tuck the king away on a square like e2 or f2 for example. So, without further ado, let me begin. And I apologise if I cough or croak during this uh, video. Uh, just recovering from um, laryngitis, uh, which is the reason I haven't posted too many videos recently. So, anyway, I'll just uh, skip through the first few moves. Um, hopefully, if you've seen the London System video number one and number two, you'll be relatively familiar. Um, so, d4, e6 bishop f4, d5, e3, c5, c3. And at this point, just to remind you, we have the thematic London system, pawn, triangle, and the dark square bishop is on the diagonal, dark square diagonal between h2 and b8. This game continues knight c6, bishop d3, bishop d7, which is a little bit passive from black. Um, other alternatives seen can be b6 with um, a fianchetto of the white square bishop. This game continued with knight bd2, knight f6, and h3. The reason I play h3 is uh, to give the dark square bishop a retreat square on h2, um, which can be particularly useful if black plays knight h5 later on in the game. So this game continued as follows, bishop e7. Here we can see black has developed somewhat passively and we'll see in this game that that really is their undoing. Game continues, knight f3, castle, knight e5, and here I'm deliberately delaying castling to see what black does next. Knight takes e5, and here I have two options. I can recapture with the bishop 
<coughs> excuse me, or I can recapture with the pawn. And very often in the London system, it's advantageous to recapture with the pawn. In terms of why that is, well, look at the Black Knight on f6 and ask yourself where it can go without losing material. And the answer is it has one square, this miserable knight e8 square. Knight e5 would lose a pawn, and obviously um, knight h5 and knight g4 um, aren't an option either. So black is forced into a miserable move, knight e8. Here I played queen b1. This looks a little bit unusual. Um, it's a double edged move. It creates a queen and bishop battery on h7. And also very often black will play on the queen side with queen b6. And it just provides uh, some protection to the b2 pawn which can become weak. Now that the dark square bishop, <coughs> excuse me, now that the dark square bishop has moved to f4, for some reason my opponent overlooks the threat and plays the c4, and I go ahead and capture the pawn with check, king h8, and I retreat the bishop to c2. As you can see, that was another reason for playing queen b1 instead of queen c2 because after black plays the sometimes annoying c4 it gives the bishop a retreat square uh, whilst maintaining itself on the mating diagonal as it's sometimes called. So the game continues g6 and g6 was a little bit like waving a red rag to a bull um, I was very tempted to sacrifice the bishop immediately um, with uh, bishop takes g6 and then queen takes g6 after recapture. But I decided to uh, keep my powder dry just for a move or two um, just to see if I could improve the position first. So develop the knight to a more active square, f3. Knight g7 and g4. I decide to uh, launch a pawn side, uh, sorry, a king side pawn storm um, just to really expose black's king. So, game continues. b5. Black is looking for counterplay. Um, as I said, please consider how much counterplay black has had in the game so far. We're on move uh, 15. And, um, well, the answer is not much counterplay at all. Okay, so, I continue pushing my pawns. Black continues um, pushing on the queen side. And I now decide the time is right to play bishop takes g6, sacrificing the bishop for two pawns. So this was a five minute game, so... I figured uh, figured it was worth the risk. Um, I liked the fact that my rook was on the h file, and that I had another couple of pieces waiting to attack. So I was interested to see what my opponent would do. They played pawn takes c3, and here I just delayed recapturing of the pawn. Brought another piece into the attack, playing knight g5, and uh, this threatens knight f7 check, uh, winning the exchange um, because it, it forks king and queen, and black would have to sacrifice the rook uh, to stop that from happening. So, unsurprisingly, they capture the the knight, and I recapture here. I, here I thought for a 30, 40 seconds or so. I was initially tempted to uh, recapture with the pawn with a discovered check on the h-file. 
but I thought that the whilst that may be uh, pleasing in the short term I couldn't see any kind of knockout blow and um, I thought that the doubled pawns on the G file on G4 and G5 would be very irritating and actually uh, keep my dark square bishop out of the game so instead I decide to play bishop takes g5 intending bishop f6 pinning the knight to the king uh, which I thought would be um, very dangerous for black so here I was very curious to see what black was going to do and uh, perhaps the best response was um, queen e8 looking for a queen exchange um, but black finally tries to get some counterplay um, queen a5 threatening uh, a discovered check um, with the pawn taking on b2 and they would pick up the rook at the same time so finally at this point I've um, as I said we're now at, at move move 21 sorry move 20 uh, I still haven't castled I still have all my options open I could castle kingside queenside or not at all and at this point um, I decide to uh, really snuff out black's counterplay by um, castling kingside capture the pawn I pay rook b1 followed by queen d2 but this is really um, something of an empty threat there there isn't much that black can do um, in fact I'll go so far as to say it's probably even a blunder because bishop f6 is pretty much devastating because um, obviously queen and bishop now threaten checkmates uh, on g7 and how does black defend that? rook f7 loses the rook and um, the only other move that makes any sense at all which is what they played rook g8 well that just leads to uh, checkmate because the as follows so just rewinding I'm going to cover off a couple of quick points again some of the criticisms of the London system is um, that it's uh, quite boring and passive um, and I hope that this game displays that there are opportunities to sacrifice a piece and there are opportunities to generate quite a convincing attack the other strength is um, really that the London system can almost completely uh, snuff out counterplay opportunities if black plays passively and as we saw in this game really apart from towards the end of the game where they threw their pawns forward and created a discovered attack threat there was really nothing in the way of counterplay opportunities for them and the third thing in terms of principles was looking at the flexibility in terms of casting kingside, queenside, delayed casting and also not casting at all and in this particular game we saw that there was an opportunity for a sacrifice an opportunity to delay castling there was almost no counterplay from black and at the end it was a very very simple checkmate so this brings the uh, third video on the London system to a natural close as I've said before I um, thoroughly recommend that it's a system well worth uh, investigating if you're not aware of it um, it's relatively simple to learn the basics and um, it's something that is seen at grandmaster level albeit on a rare occasion I hope this has been useful if you play the London system yourself or you're attempting to learn the system I hope this helps and um, if you play against the London system, 
I hope it gives you one or two tips on um, on black responses also. Thanks very much for your time and if you have any comments or questions please leave them for me on YouTube.